Good morning and welcome. Let's open our hymnals to hymn number 12. Praise him, praise him. And I'll stand as we sing. Number 12. Amen. He's worthy of our praise. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. All right. Hard to believe next week that we're going to have our Thanksgiving meal. And I hope everybody is ready for that. But if you have not signed up, please sign up out there. It's on this table over here. We need to have a, we always don't get a perfectly accurate count, but we get close to know if it's, we try to plan around 100, but if it's over 100, then we need to have maybe an additional turkey, things like that. So. Again, sign up if you know you're coming next week. We would appreciate that. All right. Also, don't forget, in this coming Saturday, uh, we're going to be delivering Thanksgiving baskets. We could use your help for that. And that will be at 9 a.m. And we'll try to have a lot of it done so it's not total chaos. Um, but then we could use your help maybe taking a basket or two to some of the folks that are on the list. So just keep that in mind. Next this coming Saturday, excuse me, at 9 a.m. here at the church. All right, what else we have here? Also, along with that, Jackie wanted uh, me to let you know, please have your food here by Wednesday, if you could. Uh, there's no room for the turkeys down in the freezer, though. I would hold off on that till Saturday if you signed up for turkeys. So keep that in mind also, because there's just no room in the freezer down there. I think we got about seven or eight turkeys, nine turkeys in there, taking up a lot of room. All right, what else we got here? Uh, it's in your bulletin. Uh, if you have a child in the program, please keep this bulletin with you because there's a lot of dates that she needs to have practice. Uh, the children's program, of course, will be on Sunday, December 18th, the week before Christmas, the Sunday before Christmas at 1030. But the special practices she needs to have so they can actually dress rehearsal, things like that, get the kids in the right spot. So when that day comes, they kind of know what's happening. Uh, special practices are going to be November 27th at 9.30, all right, and December 4th and 11th. 
at 9.30. So those three Sunday mornings, we're asking you to bring the kids an hour early, and so they'll be practicing up here and then going back to their normal classes. And then on December 17th, the Saturday before the actual program, uh, they're going to be practicing from 9 to 12. So just please keep that in mind if you have a child. I know there's a lot of dates on there, but we'd love to have your child here so things kind of get ironed out. All right. Let's see what else we have here. A communion service, Tuesday, November 22nd. There'll be no Wednesday service. It'll be at 7 p.m., and so also keep that in mind. And I think that's about basically some of the things I needed to announce this morning. Uh, birthdays, starting November 13th, Corinne Jackson. I don't see her. Happy birthday to her. Okay. Happy birthday to her today. Danielle Kaiser. I don't see her either. Happy birthday also to Danielle today. Tom Carruthers. I don't see him either. And so, uh, happy birthday to him on the 15th, Tuesday. Mache, Mache, is it Mache? Mache, Mache. Mache Derasuba. How old is he now? Anybody know? How old are you? I didn't see you sitting there. How old are you now? How old? 13. Did he say 13? Okay, happy birthday to you on the 17th. Valerie Santee. How old is Valerie going to be? 19. So, and that's on Friday the 18th. Anyone I've missed this week, this coming week, an anniversary or a birthday? All right. Okay, I want to read this card to you. This is from Dave and Pat Manning. Dear friends at First Baptist Church, your kindness is greatly appreciated. Thank you all so very much for all your cards, prayers, and delicious meals while uh, we dealt with David's surgery and then COVID. What a blessing you have been. Davis healing and graduated from a cast to a brace. He will be starting therapy to begin use of his right arm. Love and blessings, Dave and Pat Manning. I do want to add to that. Thank you again for everybody that brought meals to them. I think we almost had a week's worth of meals that we took to them, and uh, I know they appreciated it very much. So thank you for being a part of that. And... Uh, Again, it made a difference in their lives. Amen. That's what we're here for. We're families in need, right? We try to step up and help each other out. All right. I think that is all, except I want all the veterans to stand up. I'm not going to ask you to say anything. Just if you're a veteran, would you please stand up? Anyone? Any, uh, veterans. Let's give them a hand. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. Maybe may be I don't, think, I don't think we can say thank you enough, amen? And uh, I remember, I don't know where I read it or heard it on, a, a, a military man said one time, he said, all I need is, I don't need pat it on the back or anything like that. It's just once in a while, just be nice to have somebody say thank you, amen? And that's all they're asking, and they want to be appreciated for what they do. So again, thank you. And for those that are, well, we're living in a dangerous world, aren't we? At any time, our military could be called up and be put in harm's way, so. Again, we have that on our prayer list at all times, and so if you have our prayer list, you know it's always on there about our military and praying for them. So let's go to the Lord in prayer now. Heavenly Father, Lord, again, thank you for uh, your love for us. Thank you for this church body, this church family, Lord, that when there's a need arise, and we know it, we always try to help out in some way. I thank you for those that have always stepped forward, Lord. We have some good people, Lord, many good people that really love you love the people of this church. Father, help us to keep strong. That's what the message will be tonight, because we are being attacked, and we need to be together. We need to walk in the same, I guess, the same path that you'd have us all to walk in, and that's towards the Lord Jesus Christ and trying to glorify him in a world that's trying to really step on our necks, so to speak, and trying to make it harder for us to speak up and to say what we believe, Lord. So, Father, be with this message today. Be with each heart. And most of all, Lord, I pray if someone in here, maybe they have all the knowledge, but they don't have the relationship with Christ, they should. Lord, I pray for them today also. Bless our time together, Lord. We get over to you, give it over to you now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, let's all stand again and turn to him. 87, 87, fairest Lord Jesus.
I'm going to do all four verses. Questions overwhelm me, and I doubt God's power to save. When Satan seems to whisper, there is nothing but the grave. I call out to my Jesus for a vision of his face. And then my Savior lifts my eyes to behold his saving grace. I stand forgiven, in Christ I stand redeemed, for through his resurrection, death's chains are loose from me. In Christ I stand victorious, in Christ I stand complete, Jesus rescued me on Calvary's cross. Saw my debt and paid the cost, and now I know in Christ I stand. God has given me his answers to fight against the foe. Though Satan's strength is mighty, I will stand in Christ alone. The helmet of 
salvation and the Spirit's flashing sword. The belt of truth, the shield of faith, are mine through Christ my Lord. In Christ I stand forgiven, in Christ I stand redeemed, for through his resurrection death's chains are loosed from me. In Christ I stand victorious, in Christ I stand complete. Jesus rescued me on Calvary's cross, saw my debt and paid the cost, and now I know in Christ I stand. Death's chains are loosed from me. In Christ I stand victorious. In Christ I stand complete. Jesus rescued me on Calvary's cross, saw my debt and paid the cost. And now I know in Christ I stand. No song could be truer for a Christian, amen? It shouldn't be. It should be that's the way we stand in Christ. I, I want you to turn to uh, John chapter 16. I had a rough day yesterday. Nothing my poor wife had to put up with me. You ever have a day you just have an attitude? Um, sometimes I have that. Not very often, but it happens. My wife probably thinks I have it very often. But uh, it's, it's amazing that I came in and Gary said, Pastor, were you okay yesterday? And I said, well, not really. It wasn't one of my better days because I don't know why God laid you on my heart. Isn't that amazing? And sometimes we have days like that and where you kind of, I don't know, wake up on the wrong side of the bed, they say. Uh, but it just seemed like everything was bothering me. And I think what it came down to, I wasn't really happy with the message I had prepared. And later in the afternoon, we finally got home. Like We were going most of the day. And Finally got home. They had game night, and I said, uh, there ain't no way I'm going to that I don't, with my attitude. And plus, I had to uh, get the message ready. And so this is what Christ laid on my heart, and I hope it's, of course, what he wants. Amen? Sometimes you get a message ready early, and you think, okay, then I can add to it. I can go over it. And that's why I like trying to get done early, but most of the time it doesn't work out. And God lays something on my heart. He laid this today on my heart, John 16. We'll kind of go back and forth on these verses, but John 16, 1 through 4. And we'll read them and have a word of prayer. These things have I spoken unto you that you should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yes, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things have I told you, the disciples, and he tells us today. But these things have I told you, that when the time shall come, you may remember, listen now, you may remember that I told you of them. That's what the, the Scripture is about. I told you what to be prepared for, Christian. 
I told you there's going to be some rough days. There's going to be some times you're offended. Sometimes in your spirit, things aren't good. He said, I told you, I warned you about that. And these things I said unto you, said not unto you at the beginning because I was with you. He was ready to leave. Heavenly Father, Lord, I ask now that you take this message to each one's heart today. We have those days, Lord, where we don't feel much like Christians. We don't feel much like the spiritual side where the flesh gets a hold of us, Lord. And it's almost to the point of, Lord, we just want to, I guess, hide in the closet, so to speak, and just take that day away and forget about it. But, Lord, there's a reason. There's a reason for each day. There's a reason for each time you walk with us, each step we take. And so, Lord, help us to learn that today, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. I entitled this today, Christianity is not barbed wire. Christianity is not barbed wire. I think so many times we, as Christians today, the world's caving in on us, and, and we feel like we're losing, and we feel like we're imprisoned. And the next generation comes along, and we feel, and I'm not trying to pick on anybody here today. I, I'm just preaching what God laid on my heart, amen? Uh, sometimes I, I worry that on Sunday nights, where's the crowd at, amen? Now, you might have great reasons. I know some of you work. Uh, some of you can't be here. Uh, some of you have some situations going on with family that I know about that I can't share. I understand that. But there's many of you could be here, amen? And I, then I was thinking, like, is that, does that make you, when you come to church, do you feel like you're being forced to like it's a prison like oh church there's freedom in christ amen we, we shouldn't be offended by it but i think as i was like last night yesterday i was having a really rough time Lord, why do i feel like this why do, why do i feel like i'm i'm just imprisoned within myself here today i didn't like it i no matter if jackie had i get quiet Jackie knows, like, something is not right, because I'll just get real quiet. She'll say something, and I'll just, don't say any more, because she knows. It's like, okay, just leave me alone. God will handle me, amen? And it might take some time, but you get those feelings, like, and I'm thinking, like, do I feel like I'm in prison today? I didn't feel like, I didn't feel anything we did. We did a lot. We had to go get turkeys for the church. We had to buy some things, candy for the the fundraiser. We had to do some other things for the church. We're in Ontario and the snow. Of course, that didn't help. Snow. That four-letter word, amen? But we have all these things that go through our minds and our hearts sometimes, and we can, if we allow the flesh to get us, we can feel like we're in barbed wire. And God says, why do you feel like that? Why do you feel like that? See, Jesus knew that his disciples, and they were going to have some struggles. Big change was coming to the disciples' lives. He had told them he was going to die. They did not understand it. He said in three days, of course, that he would be built back up, so to speak, and they didn't understand any of it. And now he tells them, you're going to be offended unless you learn and remember what I told you. Christian, you're going to be offended when a pastor speaks something, and it, it affects you personally. You're going to think he's attacking you. I had this a, a few weeks back. I, uh, someone invited a friend, and that friend did come, praise God, amen. But it came to me afterwards, and, he, and the friend said, I'm so glad you didn't speak on I won't say the topic, because I think that would have offended him or her. And I said, that isn't how I preach, amen. You see, if you invite someone to, to church and you invite someone to hear about Christ, they might be offended, folks, but that's okay. And listen, when you come through those doors today, and I'm going to preach a message, I'm going to preach what God lays in my heart, I'm not going to worry about who's here or what you might think, because we're here for God, amen. We're here for the Lord Christ Jesus. Am I picking on people that don't come on church Sunday nights or Wednesdays? No. I'm just preaching God's word, what he laid on my heart. And you say, well, why, why do you worry about that? Because that's the obvious sign that some people think church is a prison. Church is forced upon you. The Word of God is being forced upon you, and you don't want it. What is the next generation going to think? I mean, if you can't even come to God's house, and God, that's a command, by the way. That's not a choice. In fact, he's going to tell them, you're going to be kicked out of the synagogues. That's really going to hurt these disciples. They love the church, but the church they went to was teaching false doctrine. If you think this church is 
preaching false doctrine, you shouldn't come, amen? Christianity is not barbed wire. I'm going to talk today. Don't ever give in, Christian. Don't ever give in to the flesh. Don't ever give in to the world, amen? Don't give. The flesh is there. I had it yesterday, let me tell you. The flesh can take over, amen? But it's amazing. If you're saved, that spirit's always doing his job, amen, the Holy Spirit. What are you doing? Why do you feel like that? I don't know, but I just feel like that. Leave me alone. We'll figure it out later. And I finally did. I need to change the message. Just wasn't the one he wanted. And Jesus knew that his disciples would struggle with that change and difficulties they were about to experience, something they never realized. Listen, when you get on fire for Christ and you start doing what you're supposed to do, your complete duties, guess th- things are going to change, and it's probably going to be a little rough at first. Guess what? You might lose some friends. Maybe your family will start laughing at you and boasting about their, how great they are and how little you are. Do you realize that how, what they do? They go to that church. They even give their money to the church. By the way, you give your money to God. Amen? You come here today not just to sit in church. You come here because God's commanded it and said, I love you, and I made the church. The church is my bride. Boy, how many of us are AWOL on that? Christianity is not barbed wire. It's freedom. It's true freedom. Governments would throw them in prison. They didn't realize it was coming. Friends and family would oppose them. Religions would conspire to destroy them and shut them up. He said, I'm trying to warn you. Listen to what the verse says. These things have I spoken in chapter 16. These things have I spoken unto you that you should not be offended. Well, Jesus, where's this coming from? What do you mean? Things are going pretty good right now. I mean, we've been through popular. He was went through the year of popularity. People came to him. They seen miracles. They heard great teaching. What are you talking about being offended? You're talking to me? Because I think he knew, and I know Christ knows us. There's going to be those times where you're figuring like you're in prison. Why did I choose Christ? I hope we never come to that actual thought. But the flesh is always fighting Christ. Amen. Your flesh and my flesh do not like the spiritual side. And it will fight you, and it will fight me. There was a world of danger coming, looming in their immediate future. They didn't know how quickly it was going to happen. He said, I'm I'm warning you, this is going to happen. This is going to be quick when it happens. I want you to turn just chapter 15, a couple verses back. Why did they hate him so much? Why is he giving them this warning? In verse 22, he gives the reason in chapter 15. We'll read verses 15 through 24. If I had not come, Jesus said, if I had not come, if I have not shown up, okay, if I had not come and spoken unto them, in other words, the truth, I spoke to them truth, I called them vipers, I called people that weren't doing right, I caught them, I called them out. He said, if I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. They don't want to be told they're sinners. They don't, want, they don't want a preacher to preach against them things they're doing wrong because they don't think it's sin. He said, if I just didn't do any of these miracles, that's what he'll talk about here. Go on. They had not sinned, but now they have no cloak for their sin. I revealed it. You're sinners. Everyone is a sinner. Amen? He said, I revealed it. They don't like it. Preacher, just preach nice messages. That's what they want to hear. You can fill up the church that way. He that hateth me hateth my father also. Verse 24, if I had not done among them the works which none other did. They saw it. They know that something was more different about Christ Jesus. They had not had sin. He said they can't refute it. They can't argue with it. They know deep in their soul everything I taught was true. Everything I showed them was true. It was from God. They know it. And because I told them they were sinners and they needed a Savior and that he was that Messiah, they hated him. And because they hated him, they hated Father. If you hate Christ today, you hate God the Father too. The Father and him are one. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my Father. He said, don't be surprised, disciples. 
when I leave and, I, and I'm ready to leave, don't be that you're going to be offended if you're not right with God. There's going to be messages you're going to hear. There's going to be times in Scripture you're going to read something and it, it says, points at you and you're going to say, no, I'm not going to give in. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to give up that sin. In fact, God, I'm not going to call it sin. And Jesus said, I came to reveal sin, amen? But don't enclose yourself in barbed wire. Set yourself free through Christ. What the world did, they hated to hear about their sin. And so they put themselves actually in a prison. They would rather walk in prison than be set free through Christ. And that's some Christians today, and I felt like that yesterday. I felt like I was in prison, and I felt like I couldn't get out unless I got what was right in my heart. And I ask you today, are you right with Christ? The word offended is from a Greek word which is the source of our word, scandal. It means that as a Christian, they were not to be ensnared or trapped by circumstance, nor crisis, nor critics. They were going to have them or anything that would cause a scandal for the church. Why aren't they doing that? Did you hear what they did? And a scandal's out there. He was telling the disciples, don't you be offended. Don't you have scandals. Don't, you walk as straight as you can. You stay close to Christ. You do what you're supposed to do, your duty. Yes, they're going to come at you, but they'll be, their words will be empty and vain. Today, where are you at? Is there things that you're in your life that you need to get rid of? And it's because you won't get rid of that sin, because you won't call it sin, because the pastor, if he speaks on that again, I'm going, I told you one time somebody said, don't speak on tithing. Well, I don't much. But why not? But why not, amen? You're supposed to tithe. Not like whenever I feel like it. Whenever God increases your money, amen? We don't want to preach about that. That's not really what the message is. I could throw a lot of things out there, amen? Tell us I got my own problems, Amen? <laughs> I get my own problems. Don't cause a scandal. They were not to let what was going on, was going to happen in their lives, become a stumbling block to their spiritual, I guess, what do you want to say, spiritual failures. Do you and I have some spiritual, I had a spiritual failure yesterday, amen? God forgave me, amen? I asked him to forgive me. My poor wife sometimes has to endure that. That's when we become one, folks, Amen. During the bad times. But I ask you, do you go to Christ? Are you going to cause a scandal? I'm going to give up. Could you imagine, and you've seen it in the past, great men of God, and a scandal happens, and it destroys the church, it destroys the ministry. What was that? Oh, a long time ago. I can't remember his name. Absolutely, I used to like listening to him. Now I can't remember his name. But he had an affair. Who was it? Yeah, he was one of them. I don't remember the name now. Uh, That isn't it. But it's one of those. They're all the same, right? They all failed. This is longer than that. I can't remember. He was really, had a lot of charisma. And I remember when he finally got up to church that day, they showed that on the news. Of course they showed that on the news, amen. Amen. And he got up and tears crying, and he always had a handkerchief, and he's, and he's, he's apologizing. He said, I, I failed God. I failed, you know, goes on and on. But I didn't look at him because I knew God was going to handle him, amen. I looked at the people that loved him. And there was a guy on the front row, I don't know if it was one of the deacons, just totally lost it. He just totally lost it. He was just sobbing and and, and just and I felt so bad. You see, what a scandal does, it only, not only hurts you, but it hurts the church. And he was trying to warn him, Christian, every one of us are in the body of Christ. Every one of us has got to guard ourselves, amen? Because if you go to this church and you say you go to this church and you belong to this church and you love this church that God has brought you to and you believe truth is being preached here and you believe Christ is part of it and the Holy Spirit guides us and all of a sudden you go out there and start Something happens in your life and you allow it to infest you and and all of a sudden you get greater sin and greater sin and pretty soon a scandal happens 
And you're not only affected, but the church is. And Jesus was worried about that when he said in verse, chapter 16, verse 1, These things have I spoken unto you, that you should not be offended. Don't be a stumbling block. When things don't go right, don't stumble over them. You become unsteady. I wonder how many Christians are unsteady today. How much will it take for you to kind of leave the path God has you on? How many Christians today are hesitant to, to really step out in faith and do what they know they should be doing? They're, they're not bad people. They're good people. But God says you need to do this. You need to step out a little stronger by faith and start doing the things you know you're supposed to do. But they're hesitant. They're unsteady. They're hesitant. They become careless. Ah, here he goes again preaching on that. That isn't for me. And all of a sudden what comes in is confusion. Pretty soon you slip back far enough and you're confused. Is that really sin? Is that not sin? I don't feel so bad about it now. Things are okay now. And you think you're setting yourself free when really you're entrapping yourself in barbed wire because you're not doing what God would have you to do. When he convicts you, he said, I want to set you free. How about when someone offends you, disciples? We're the disciples today. If you're, if you're saved today, if you have Christ Jesus in your heart, if there's that moment you can go back to and you know without a doubt that you're a sinner that, act, that really cried out to God and said, God, please forgive me. And I believe it's through Christ Jesus. Amen? I believe he shed his blood for me, that he died on that cross and that he rose again that third day. And he sits on the right hand of God. I ask that Jesus to come into my heart. If that's you today, you're a disciple. You were, disciple means disciplined. And we got a lot of disciples walking around that are not disciplined. How about when someone offends you? Know this. If you are God's child, he's got your back. Amen? He's got your back. He loves you. He wants you to do right. Do you hear me today? Do you hear God today? Not me, just through God's word, though. Don't be offended. When God steps on your toes and he says, get this right, please. I want to bless you. I want to give you an inward joy. I, I want to give you something you can't even imagine. And the next generation watches us. And Parents, I, I was here. I know. I didn't even want to go to church. Jackie was the strength. I, I told you that. My testimony is the best. I, I didn't want to go. Man, I'd rather watch the NFL pregames. You know? I'm serious. That's what I used to think sometimes. I was raised on that. Man, Sunday mornings, I would turn that TV on. And my whole day was football. Dad taught me that. And all of a sudden, they wanted me to go to church. And then Sunday nights, right in the middle of some of the games. Isn't it sad how we can think that we can go to such a, a low spot that it's okay to miss God's word being preached? I don't know. Don't lose your Christian testimony because of some dispute or disappointment or even a defeat. You know, sometimes we're going to get defeated in this world. We might lose a battle, but we're not going to lose the war. Amen? We're going to lose some battles, folks. I lost yesterday. I'm praise God he forgave me, amen? That's freedom. That's freedom. Ask yourself this. Have you lost your Christian testimony lately? Are you afraid to admit it because you don't want people to know? Why? God knows. Do you got a sin that's so deep your wife... Your husband doesn't even know it. And you don't know how to, what to do about it. You can't, you can't share it. I would tell the pastor, but I don't know what he would think. Listen, it doesn't matter what I think. It's what God knows. I'm going to always try to lead you where God wants you to go. I'm not going to judge you. I ask you today, have you had some disappointment or even a defeat? And instead of going to God and asking for forgiveness and admitting it to yourself, admitting it to him, I failed. 
get me right. I don't want to live like this. Instead, we bury it and bury it and bury it, and pretty soon we wonder why we're so unhappy and why we can't overcome this sin. And all of a sudden, Christian, you're in barbed wire. You don't want to come to church. You don't want to read your Bible. Your prayer time is a joke. And you wonder why. He's trying to tell them, please, please, this is going to happen. Please don't give up. Press on. Do right. Christian, don't give up. Amen? Don't give in. Look at verse 2. Then they shall put you out of the synagogue. And he had to warn them that way because I'll tell you a little bit about it here in a minute. Yea, the time coming that whosoever killeth you would think that he do with God's service. He realized, see, they went into the synagogues. There might be 100 people there. We don't know how big, whatever synagogue they would go in, just like a church, the, the, how many people would be there. But they would read the scriptures. And then if people wanted to, they had the right to stand up and comment. And so what, you know what the disciples are going to do. And Jesus used to do it, amen. He would go into the synagogue. They would read it. If, he, if they gave it to him, he would read it. If not, the priest would read it, and all of a sudden, he'd stand up and say something. Well, he says, realize, disciples, when you stand up and you're going to start telling about Christ Jesus, they're not going to listen to you long. They're going to put you out of the synagogue. Yeah, you can go in, start at the early in the ministry. You're going to do that. You're going to go in. You're going to stand up. And they should have stand up. They should stood up, right? And say, wait a minute, let me tell you what that scripture means. That scripture means Christ Jesus. That scripture in the Old Testament, that's about the one you just crucified. You think they're going to listen to that? But it has to be done. Don't you be offended, disciples. They're the ones that should be offended. But too often, us Christians are offended. When I preach a message or you read Scripture and you say, I don't want to have any part of that, I'm offended. You've just stepped on my toes. No, God did. When things don't go right, are you going to stumble over them? When someone offends you, you believe God's got your back? Where are you at? Press on, do right. Listen, storms are going to come. Storms are going to rage. Sometimes they'll be violent. Violent. And you'll think that smooth sailing that you had yesterday was a memory. (laughs) Man, this it was good yesterday, boy. Today is like crazy. How are you going to handle the storm? Is that when you're all of a sudden you're going to run to God? Amen. Oh, I need God now. God. I wonder if sometimes that makes him sick. I hope not, because I know he loves you. Could you imagine that? You haven't seen a friend for, I think of those ones that, did somebody win a, win a billion dollars or something in the lottery or something? Could you imagine you win the billion dollars and all of a sudden you're getting phone calls? Hey, remember me? I grew up with you. Huh? That's the way it is with, sometimes with Christ. Hey, hey, go ahead, remember me. I need you now. Please, love Christ. Love Christ Jesus. He loves you. He loves you. Jesus says to his disciples, don't be offended. Do not stumble when they put you out of the synagogues. He knew that was going to be hard on them. Could you imagine I'm preaching a lesson and something's happened in the church and somebody sta- stands up. I think it happened to... Uh, Brother Lockyer kind of that way, didn't it? They stand up on a Sunday morning, and you stand up on a Sunday morning and say, Get out of here, Pastor Jeff. We've had enough of your preaching. Basically, that's what they did to Brother, right? On a Sunday morning. They told him, Shut up. And they told him to leave. You don't think it can happen, folks? It happened a couple months back. He said, Shut up. I want to hear you. And he was preaching right out of the Scriptures, amen? See, people don't want to hear that today, and Christians are getting that way. And what do you think the next generation is going to be? I'm trying to help you. 
See, they read from the Torah, a Jewish scripture. And then if you stood up, you had the right to speak. So they said, supposedly you had the freedom. I praise God I have the freedom to preach. Amen. I cannot tell you how many people have been to our church over the years from missionary training school. Uh, Brother Easter has told me this. Uh, other men that have preached here, they can feel the spirit. And they said, I felt, the f- I felt free to preach at your church. That doesn't always happen, folks. Then Jesus said, the time will come, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think they do it God's service. In verse 2, they're actually thinking they're doing God's will. You remember the Christian martyrs. Man, you ever read that book? How some of these people died? Absolutely terrible. Terrif- they had to be terrified. Even though they believed in God, and some of them were actually burning at the stake. And they, they said, now renounce Christ, and they would sing Christian songs. Remember 9-11? They thought they were doing God's service. Their God. You go to some, you go to some places today, Christianity will not be tolerated. They catch you, you're in prison. And we have trouble in America to even do the little things. I just wonder how much of Christianity in America is really walking around with barbed wire. They've never set themselves free and followed Christ as they should have. They can't give it up. Why do so many hate Jews even and hate Jesus and hate Christians? Why, what do they have against us? They don't seem like they attack other religions like they attack Christianity. It seems like we're the ones around the world you hear. Praise God it hasn't come here yet. It's coming. My hope is and my prayer is I hope I'm strong enough to stand up to it. Amen. I had a great man of God that I really respect. He said, he goes, honestly, it hasn't happened yet. I don't know how I'll react. I hope that I stand up for Christ. But can I guarantee it? No. What if the government came to your house and said, do you believe in Christ Jesus? Yes, I do. You sure you do? Because we're going to take all your pay away, all your Social Security, all your health benefits. We're going to take everything away that you're getting right now unless you renounce Jesus Christ. And you do it publicly. What would we do? Man, that's my livelihood. That's what I kinda, I've kind of i been kind of waiting for when I retired. I, I've been kind of counting on this. What would you do? Is it because that through many centuries, why they hate us so much? Christians refuse to renounce Christ Jesus. Religions have come and religions have failed. But not Christ Jesus. You see, maybe the great personal danger, when they thought they had this one, I heard the story someone was telling me, and maybe it was on the news where, uh, I think I shared this with you, that they were going to kill 20 Christians. I can't remember where it was. I don't know if it was um, a Taliban or what it was. But they put them on their knees, and out of the 20, they were Christians, but one wasn't. You heard this story? One wasn't, but he went down, they went down through all these personally and said, do you believe in Christ Jesus? Are you gonna? And they shot him. And they came to the last one, I don't know, I'm paraphrasing this, and they came to the last one, he says, are you a Christian? He says, I wasn't, but I am now. And they shot him. Do you know the difference you can make standing up for Christ? You love him? Do you? More and more Christians today are hearing, keep silent, telling our teenagers, you shut up. Don't you pray before a game. Don't you pray after a game. Don't you use the name of Christ Jesus around me. But you can hear this. You can put a litter box for our kids can have their little animal, whatever, furries. You can have transgenders walking around that's totally against God, amen? You can have homosexuality and throw it all around our kids and say, but don't you speak about Christ Jesus. 
And Jesus said, don't you be offended in me because it's coming. Don't you be offended in me. They're going to kick you out of the synagogues. Church, they're going to come after you, church, if you're teaching truth. They don't want you to shut up. Listen, they even might kill you, and they'll say, see, we did it for God. They shut him or her up. But your kids are watching, amen. The next generation's watching. But we're hearing that. Keep silent. Don't like what you're saying or what you're doing. Some may stigmatize us, actually try to, to sh- discredit us and, and try anything they can, lie about us. You know, they, they say now they can take pictures and, and put things, pictures into it, amen? They can, they can take things right now in technology and make you look and feel guilty. Don't be surprised. Man, if they can make Christ Jesus look guilty, they sure can make me look guilty. But see, my trust isn't in man. My trust is in God because he knows my heart and he knows your heart. Are you offended in Christ Jesus? I'm not saying the big things. I'm saying the small things. Daily things. I hope they don't slay any of us, but it could happen. But as the apostles, would we or could we we should be like them. Never cower down. Man, we know, we know Peter's going to really cower, amen? But I'm telling you, after the resurrection, after he becomes one of the great apostles, he never cowers again. You see, we have those moments where we're kind of weak, and we got to learn from those weakness. When he, when he failed Christ, and Christ looked back at him, and he remembered it, he said, when the cock crows three times, you're going to deny me three times. He remembered it, and all of a sudden, that failure became faith strong. Your failures aren't there so God can step on you. Your failures are there so God can teach you. But are you learning? You're still in that barbed wire? Could you imagine if I had, last night, uh, if I went and got another lesson, I would have thought, you know, I'm just going to stick with the old lesson. I'll keep my attitude up. I'll just keep it up. But see, that isn't what God wants. I knew I failed. What do you want, God? Please tell me. I don't like feeling like this. Do you like feeling guilty over some sin that you're doing? Christianity is a behavior, is learning how to live, and towards our adversaries is not to destroy them, amen? We're not out to destroy the world, we're out to try to save the world. But they don't look at it that way. But our our Christianity is different. In fact, we would defend their right to be wrong and practice wrong because we don't force feed our beliefs through intimidation. We don't force feed our beliefs through threats or even murder. Because that isn't salvation anyhow, amen? Could you imagine somebody comes in here and they're going to point a gun at you? You're going to believe, right? Okay. But your heart doesn't believe. Christianity is let the Holy Spirit, use plant the seeds, let the Holy Spirit do the work. In love, amen? I think that's why they, many faiths hate Christianity because we, we love life and we love people instead of trying to force them through intimidation. You see, that's not real belief anyways. Why do these religious fanatics do as they do? I, I, don't, I don't know their heart. I don't know why. But Jesus does give us the answer. Look at verse 3. And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. What do you think, disciples, when this comes to you and you're going to be offended and they're going to laugh at you and they're going to throw you out of the synagogues and you're going to be killed, by the way? Most of them were, amen? John went to the island of Patmos. Where are you today? Do you know today? Do you know Christ Jesus? Do you really know the Heavenly Father? You see, Jesus said, if you know me, you know the Father. Sometimes we think, well, I don't really know about much about the Father. Yes, you do. You know Christ. They're one. They think the same. They act the same. They have the same heart. You can't separate them. Only sin could. And they came back together. 
Where are you today, Christian? Do you really know Christ Jesus as your Savior? Can you look back to that point and say, I'm a Christian? But a Christian means Christ-like. And it means when I do fail, you, you admit it, you get it right, and you try not to do it again. You don't, let, you don't smooth it over and say it's okay. It's not okay. It's not okay. We would like everyone. Wouldn't we like everyone to be a Christian? Wouldn't that be a great world? We'd like everyone to be a Christian. But to force even one person to say yes, force them, intimidate them, to say yes to any Christian doctrine is not how God would have us to operate. We share our beliefs and allow God to work. Trouble will always be around. Just don't get misled because truth will always be attacked. Don't, your teens today, don't you be surprised every single day of your school year, truth is being attacked. And that's why you need to be in Scripture so you know the truth from lies. When they tell you that's okay and the Bible says it's not okay, then guess who's right? We'd like everyone to be a Christian, but all he says is share your beliefs. Share them. But let you know this too, but truth will win out, amen? Look at verse 4. But these things have I told you that when the time shall come, you may remember that I told you of them. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning because I was with you. But I'm not here now. The Holy Spirit has come. The Comforter has come. He resides in you and I as saved, as saved people today. And he's saying, don't be offended, Christian. Don't be offended. I want to end with 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 16. 1 Peter chapter 4. I spoke about Peter a little earlier that he failed miserably, but after that, look out. 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 16. I'll read a few more than that, but the main one is verse 16. First Peter chapter 4, verse 16. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be, what is that? Ashamed. That's what he's telling us. Don't be ashamed. But let him glorify God on this behalf. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God, which we started today. Amen. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? Wow. Jesus said, don't be offended to me, disciples. It's going to come. Don't you be offended. Don't you be ashamed. Don't you be ashamed to be a Christian. Amen. Would you stand, please? Heavenly Father, Lord, I ask today that as I had a rough day yesterday and I fought so many things in my own heart and my flesh was winning very much so, I'm so thankful that I'm a Christian because, Lord, you're not ashamed of me. You didn't throw me to the side or say forget it. You kept convicting me, teaching me, guiding me. I'm so thankful for your love. I know these folks are too, Lord, but I know there's some struggling in their walk. We all have those moments. We, maybe it's sin, Lord, that we're in. That it's not bad sin in the world's eyes, but it's sin. Lord, I pray today that they would make it right. Give it, come to the altar and say, I'm not ashamed, Lord. I give it over to you today. I wonder sometimes if we don't come to the altar because we're ashamed to. And that's saying, Christ Jesus, I just don't know if this is the right thing to do. To ask for forgiveness is always the right thing to do. To repent is always the right thing to do. To get right with God is always the right thing to do. Help Christians today not be surrounded by barbed wire. To release it today. To give over their lives to you. Maybe anew. I don't know. And Lord, maybe there's someone in here today that isn't saved. They don't know Christ. Jesus died for their sins on that bloody cross. That he sacrificed everything for them so their sins could be forgiven through him. I pray for them today that they'll come forward and we'll show them in God's word how they might be saved. God bless this invitation. It's for your glory. It's for Christ Jesus to be honored and worshiped today. May we see fruit 
from your word, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name, amen. In 596. God talking to you? He sure talked to me yesterday. I surrender all. 596. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I, I thank you for Danny and for the love of the people, but I love them too. And I know my love is pale in comparison to your love for them. So it must truly hurt, Lord, when we fail. But, Lord, thankful that your love even covers those times. And you lift us back up. And you put us back on our feet. And you say, go on. I love you. I love you. You're my child. Father, I pray for those that might be struggling today. and Lord, they might feel that love in a special and powerful way. And they'll give their lives back over to you. Maybe some things they just need to give up, Lord, something small. But, Lord, I know there'll be blessings that come from it. Anytime we draw nearer to you, Lord, there's always hope. And there's a better life waiting. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, folks. God bless.